Hello and welcome to this episode of the Industrial Engineering Notebook. Today's topic is Markov chains. Let's get started. Let's say in your widget factory you have five different machines called A, B, C, D, and E. And each of these machines, you got a technician. You got one technician in charge of all of these machines. He, he can only repair one at a time. They're always breaking down these machines. And so he goes from one machine to another with a certain probability, right? And then once he's at this other machine, then he'll go to another one with a certain probability. And he does this until his day is over. Let's name some variables here. So let's say the steps that he takes in a day are called N. So it's, you know, one step, then he takes two steps, then he takes three steps, and on and on and on and on. And we'll use the random variable X to denote the machine that the technician is at. So to connect these machines, we need to know a conditional probability. If you want more information on conditional probabilities, definitely check out the probability rules video. So we want to know the probability that Xn, so the machine that the technician is at, at time n, or step n, equals, and then let's just say, C, given that the machine the technician was at the last step, the last machine that he was at, so n minus 1, the step directly before, was, I don't know, let's say B. And let's say you've been at this factory for a while and you happen to know there is a 75% chance that that is going to happen. That given that the technician is at machine B, the next step, the next machine is going to go to is machine C with 75% chance. So we'll write that conditional probability by drawing a little arrow from B to C and then just writing right there 0.75. And then let's say given that the technician's at B, he goes to machine A with probability 0.25. So there's, there, we got machine B. Notice that all the arrows leaving machine B need to add up to one. It wouldn't make much sense if it added to something greater than one or to less than one. There's a 100% chance that he's gonna leave. It's just a matter of finding out where and we, we decide where based on these conditional probabilities. And let's say that's machine A and there's machine C and there's machine D. Wait, what's that up there? Great question. This is called a self-transition. So given that the technician is at machine D, there's a 30% chance that the next machine the technician is going to fix is machine D. So basically the technician fixes the part that he came to fix and then another part in the machine breaks down. So he's right back there at machine D. And so if that doesn't happen, there's a 70% chance that it'll go to machine C. And there's machine E. There's a 100% chance that once the technician fixes something at machine E, there's a 100% chance that something else is going to break. And basically, if the technician gets to machine E during his day, he is there the rest of his day. We have a couple assumptions here. The first one is Markov's assumption. And Markov's assumption is that Xn minus 1 is the only step that matters. So we're not worried about the state at n minus 2 or the state at n minus 3 and so on. All that matters is where you were before. So given that the technician is at machine A, what is the probability that the technician will go to machine C? There is no given that the technician went to, was at machine B and then at machine A, what's the probability that it goes to C? Nope, doesn't happen. All we care about is one time step back, one epoch back. These do not matter. The second assumption is the stationary assumption. And this is a little bit easier to understand. It's just that the conditional probabilities don't change on you. Once you transition from A to C, the transition probability from A to C doesn't change, from B to A doesn't change. All of these probabilities stay the same. It doesn't matter how many steps through the factory that this technician is taking. Now drawing pictures is a lot of fun. This can kind of give you a good picture of the factory just doing a little diagram like this. But really what we want to be able to do is math. Surprise, surprise. We want to do math with this. We want to know questions like, okay, you know, this is what the technician's day looks like. How many times on average in a day is the technician going to visit machine D, let's say? That's important information to know. You might want to know on average, how much time once the technician leaves machine B, 
how many steps will the technician have to take before they end up at B? And I mean, looking at this, you know, it would have to be two, right? It'd have to be one, two, and then it would only be able to be in multiples of two because there's no way to get back. So anyway, different problems like that, and you can kind of look at the picture and try to figure them out for yourself, but really it'd be easier if we could describe this little picture in the form of a matrix. Hope you paid attention in linear algebra, here we go. The basic structure of this is from and to, from machine A to machine C, from machine C to machine E, and this is just one single matrix here. So from A to A, well, there's no self-transition there, so we know that probability is zero. All of the entries in this matrix are the conditional probabilities that we talked about earlier. The probability of going from A to B, 50%, 0 0.5. From A to C, 0 0.5. From A to D, well, eventually you'll get there, but we're only concerned about one step. Remember Markov's assumption. So A to D, zero. A to E, zero. And then we can do the same for these other ones. And there's our matrix. Notice here that all the rows add up to one, just like how in the picture, based on where the technician was, we had to make sure that all the transition probabilities added up to one, leaving each machine. So in the same way, all these rows are gonna add up to one. Columns, not necessarily. So this one adds up to some number greater than one. This is less than one. What's important is that the rows are adding up to one. And this is kind of the launching pad to doing more math with this to really get an in-depth look at your factory. But it all starts with being able to draw this picture, write out this matrix, and understand those basic assumptions. If you like this video, definitely give it a like. And if you didn't like it, maybe just like it for the sake of old Andre Markov. Do it for him. Subscribe, that way I know to keep making these videos about my boy Markov, like, subscribe, and then if you have questions, put them in the comments. This is fundamental to the field of stochastics, so get your questions answered.